My name is Nikki. I'm an English makeup artist and I live with Carlo and our daughter Skye in Positano, Italy. Our house is far from the road but surrounded by fruit trees and olive groves and we grow our own food. We'll show you what it's really like to live on the Amalfi Coast. Subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. Good morning. I am going hiking again today and Carlo is not <laughs> because today is All Souls Day. So he will be down in the cemetery. There'll be lots of visitors for him. And I was gonna take Holly, but I've just realized that we're catching a bus at one point and I don't think she's gonna be allowed on the bus. So I'm gonna to have to leave her with Carlo for the day, but I'm sure she'll be fine. There'll be lots of doggy visitors to keep her company in the cemetery. And I will see her when I get home this evening. Let's go. Just got up to halfway down the pathway and had to come back because I forgot my water bottle, which was the whole point of me actually emptying out my bag earlier to make room for it. And I'm going to need that. Literally cannot get out of the house these days without my keys. I could not get out of the house these days without having to come straight back again because I've gotten something yesterday three times. I went out the gate, down the steps and back up again for something. Look who was up in the top guard. He was looking at me so I was absolutely crazy. I think he thought I was probably doing exercise just down the steps and up again and down the steps and up again. But no, it's just because I keep forgetting stuff. Morning, sheepies. I'm still waiting for my neighbour to get back to me about the olive oil. Um, hopefully they'll call me in the next day or so. I know they do a bit pretty much every day, but hopefully we'll be doing olive oil soon. I better start walking because I've got five minutes till I'm supposed to be meeting Lucy at the road. It's pretty spectacular skies today though. I thought I had just spotted something completely new, but I've realised what I'm actually looking at. I'm going to zoom in. That wall down there, right behind the church, is dark red and I thought, oh. They must have cleaned up that wall and painted it dark red. That looks nice. I've just realised it is leaves turning red. I have arrived in civilization, so mask on. And there she is. <laughs> We are under, where are we, under a Tarani. We're walking from a Tarani to a Malfi in the tunnel, the magic tunnel. There's nobody in it but us. On San Di Cristo. The beach of a Malfi. Completely deserted this morning. It's definitely not warm enough. So we are catching the bus up to Ravello and then we're going to walk one of the pathways down back towards Atrani. Here is Alessandro. Better late than never. <laughs> Ciao! <laughs> Need a coffee and a croissant. I'm quite happy to have a second breakfast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we have arrived. Ah. Where are we going next time? Wow! It's the Monastery of San Nicola. It's about uh, three miles hiking together. Three miles? Three miles and then uh, when you get there you can hike to Camonti, which is behind the mountains. Wow! So it is extremely quiet here today, it's basically just us.
second breakfasts are always a good idea. I've never had this. Ah, questo. Yeah, I'm going to go to the other. Completely randomly, even though it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Alessandro and Zianussi have bought after eight. <laughs> Alessandro's never had them before. <laughs> so we've discovered a new thing this morning, but I've had to explain that they are supposed to be consumed only after eight in the evening. But I uh, know, uh, I thought it was after eight in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's cheating. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try one. Because yeah. Going, like... Go on. Classic afternoon. I'm really having a chocolate feast. I have also got a cornetto full of chocolate. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> and walk it all off afterwards, yeah? Okay, today's soul, fat souls day. <laughs> <laughs> well, yesterday me and Lucy had planned to take you uh, to Scala, which is uh, the other village in yeah. front of us. And uh, starting from the main square, which is uh, that direction, then to hike all the way up to the ruins of a castle, of a medieval castle, which is beautiful and also the the location is very strategic and it's, it's wonderful because it's between the two valleys here and the other one, the Valley of the Paper Mills. But as you can see, there are clouds mm. and yeah, we would have been hiking in the middle of the clouds. So okay. We preferred to stay here, a little bit down the elevation and then to continue down to Atrani and Amalfi. Okay. Yes, because I went and did the um, the uh, ski lift to Castellamare up to Montefaito and did a huge hike there and it was all in clouds so it's definitely not worth doing it on a cloudy day. We're going to go for a little walk around Ravello first. We're walking up towards the posh hotel area at the moment. How it is uh, structured Ravello right now is different comparing to the Middle Ages because the square, the main square uh, right now didn't exist um, and there were palaces before the church was built and the main church was actually uh, what it is nowadays Piazza Fontana Moresca where there is a fountain and that used to be the place for the local market and it was also strategic because it was uh, closer to the ancient walls of Ravello where we are going and um, and closer to the communication way with the other village of, uh, villages of the coast. The tradition of uh, melting the blood, uh -huh. then uh, they do the procession around the town with the things, and they carry. Well, yeah. So the hotel Caruso is closed, but the hotel Caruso cat is obviously being very well looked after. His name is Fluffy and Ravello is the town of cats, that's why we love him. Mm. Hey Fluffy! Scendo pulizia. Okay, this church is uh, San Giovanni del, del Toro's church. It's uh, one of the oldest in town. What is really fun, we can't see it from here, but inside uh, there's a church above another one. So this church is above the old uh, church ah. and when you go inside there's a glass and you can see the old dome Wow! which was made during the 9th century while this one uh, was made during the 11th century Didn't know that! And it's beautiful, even uh, if the columns you see here are Roman columns taken from I don't know where because there were lots of Roman villas and temples uh, and uh, during Middle Ages when they built churches they also took the columns uh, to decorate the churches. That um, what used to be the palaces. Mm -hmm. No, I no. said that it was the residence of popes because when I stayed there, they told me about it. So I think the palace. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this could be a useful piece of information. If you ever need a laundromat in Ravello, it is right next to the Hotel Parsifal. Right next to the Piazza Moresca. Out of the, of the old gate of Ravello, the medieval gate of Ravello, as you can see, we have two towers. 
and of course they have built homes inside it. And uh, this is so fascinating because when you hike, you realize you get out of the uh, the old town and you walk and you reach the other villages according to history. So you walk in history. Alessandra has just mentioned that this area here, which is where the entrance of the city, the walled city was, is also where the Via Stabiana starts from. That is the pathway that he, he explained about in the chestnut hunting video that starts from Avello and goes all the way to Castellamare near Naples and it starts from right here outside the city walls. We are back in the main square and we're going to start walking down in a minute. We're just coming to the Villa Rufula. During the uh, Middle Ages, uh, lots of rich families, as Alessandro told you, were uh, living here in, uh, in Ravello and in Scala. Many of them, after uh, the, the end of the Republic, of the Malfitan Republic, uh, uh, lost uh, properties and money. Some of the properties were sold uh, to different peoples, to different owners until uh, uh, the 1800s and 1900s where the villas were completely left abandoned and uh, during the 1800s uh, there was uh, a Scottish lord, uh, Sir uh, um, Neville Reed, uh, who decided to stay here uh, after the Grand Tour of Italy. Uh, those uh, mostly British and Scottish people uh, were um, seeing uh, uh, um, the ruins of Pompeii and Naples uh, and uh, they were going to Pestum but on the way from Pompeii to Pestum they were stopping on the Amalfi Coast and they loved the Amalfi Coast so much that they decided to live here. Imagine that there was no road for cars to come up here so they arrived uh, on mules. So we are, st we are starting our walk just off to the side of the tower which is the entrance to the Villa Ruffolo. And here, there are steps that start to lead all the way down to Amalfi and Atrani. And then we come out of the tunnels and we are actually turning right nice apple tree here and there's a pomegranate tree just over there yeah yeah please anytime i told them as soon as things are better i'm gonna go alessandra has just noticed that this is one of the old gates of ravello it's written there porta, porta donica. donica i just saw it now <laughs> so many years that i've been walking here and this is so beautiful yeah yeah because i've just been reading about this in books I've never seen okay it. So you could take those stairs there to go to Minori, but we're going this way towards Amalfi. Which involves a quick little walk along the road. And this is a persimmon tree. I have done the other side of stairs down. And So Gorvidal's house, the Rondinaio, is right up the top there. You go, you continue, you walk for 15-20 minutes. And you, you end up right, um, right at the entrance of Villa Cimbrona. So it's like a round walk that you can do. But this time we are going down to Atani. Alessandro is saying that this is one of the steepest pathways that he knows of in the area. If you're walking up it, it absolutely kills you because it's incredibly steep and inclined. He was going to explain why, but now he's way ahead of me, so I probably missed that. Just 
to get some bearings, up straight above us is the infinity terrace of the Villa Cimbrone. Beautiful views along this pathway. This is a myrtle plant, maybe also known as wild blueberries. So that's why it became the plant of the goddess Venus, and so it became the plant of true love. And also in wedding ceremonies, it is they used to put branches in the um, in the bouquets of the brides, and uh, also in the middle of the table uh, during wedding ceremonies. We have Vida. It's built right where there used to be a castle who protected Atrani, and this castle used to be called Supramonte because it is on top, top of, of the mountain. mountain above Atrani. And to reach this uh, castle fortress, um, there was a, a, a steep uh, flight of stairs up, which I will show you just around the corner. And it was made on purpose. I think it was made on purpose just to give distance when Atrani was attacked by enemies, pirates. Yeah. Um, so the people of, Af of Atrani uh, fled here and they wanted to give distance to the enemies. So. <laughs> Yep, but it's definitely very steep, and we are now going down it. It's a maze of alleyways, alleyways and a flight of stairs, and it's so beautiful because it's really off, off the beaten track, the beaten path in this way, in this case. But I, uh, uh, yeah. really I big steps as well. I was trying to do a time lapse going down, but it's yeah, actually too good. steep. I need my hands free to hold on to the sides every now and again. Possibly not the best staircase to do if you have knee problems because it's pretty tough. <laughs> and we have made it back down to the road where the Ravello traffic light is. So we will cross the road and follow the steps down. Slow coach over there has been ordering her Thai dinner. Thai lunch. <laughs> yum yum. Pad Thai, spring rolls, oh, and uh, chicken satay. Yum! <laughs> oh, that way. Oh, yeah, from there. Oh, yeah, you can see it. Is there a church in the square? Directo or Directo? Ah, Directo. 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 There's somebody running on the beach, and there's also somebody having a swim. in the Piazza of the Church in Akrani. We are walking through Atrani and Alessandro is going to take us to a hidden MC Escher lithograph where he did one of his drawings that's little known about. So many times when European visitors uh, came exploring Atrani, they uh, were mistaking Atrani for Tunis or Algeria. Ah. Because the maze of alleyways re was really similar to the alleyways in Tunis. <laughs> Like a, like a city of the Maghreb in Northern Africa. And this is where we are, the, the uh, MC Escher corner. Ah. Up here. So uh, this is how it is, where we are now. Yeah. And this is how he drew it. Of the cloister. <laughs> He's just found his sister. Speaking uh, in 
Istanbul in the year of uh, We're just walking back up to the car park now, which is just up here. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Bon pranzo. Bye bye. Ciao. Ciao.